Hey, what's going on, everyone? We're going to talk about this article written by The Block. You guys can read the title, Over $300 million in Bitcoin was stolen from a Japanese cryptocurrency exchange. Yes, Bitcoin. And we have all of these regulators, people who are in prominent positions, people who create laws, stating that Bitcoin is used for crime. Well, if Bitcoin doesn't have any value, as they will also say, then why will people go through great lengths to steal Bitcoin from cryptocurrency exchanges. If there's no value, then obviously people won't try to come in and hack and steal and try to move this Bitcoin. But apparently it has to have value because people are stealing other people's Bitcoin from cryptocurrency exchanges. So what should we do? Well, we gotta protect ourselves. So let's go ahead and look at this article real quick. You guys can see that apparently this hack occurred on Friday. DMM is the cryptocurrency exchange in Japan that they announced that more than $300 million in Bitcoin has been stolen from its wallets. So if they were stolen, I'm talking about the Bitcoin, if the Bitcoin was stolen, then apparently those Bitcoins were in a hot wallet, meaning that they wasn't stored off of the internet they were connected to the internet to where these hackers these stealers could come in and grab that bitcoin one thing that these cryptocurrencies should have known or at least this japanese one is that you need to hold your bitcoin off of the exchange it needs to be secure in a cold wallet meaning that it's not connected to any sources of connection connectivity or networks it's off the network but apparently they didn't do that and then look at the next bullet the company said that it will reimburse clients if necessary what do you mean if necessary are you guys going to get the Bitcoin back if not you should be instituting ways to get those clients their funds back because 300 million dollars is a lot now why would people even to this day after all of the hacks that has occurred within these exchanges and people getting hacked as well, why would people still hold Bitcoin on exchanges? Bitcoin doesn't need to move until you're ready to use it. If you're not going to use Bitcoin for any transactions, then don't put it on the network. Keep it off the network. All right. So let's go a little bit further. Japanese cryptocurrency exchange DNM Bitcoin announced on Friday that more than $300 million of Bitcoin had been stolen in a breach. Now, is it just me? But maybe you thought about this as well. Has anyone ever been caught stealing Bitcoin? It seems to me that these hacks, these breaches happens continually, but you never see who the culprit is. You don't know who they are. Are they ever going to get caught, go to trial, go to prison, get locked up? Because you see this happening all the time, but you never see the ending result of these people being brought to justice. Some things just make you wonder sometimes who's really behind these hacks. Because they report these hacks all the time, but they never come back and say, well, here is the alleged hacker who stole all of this Bitcoin is it an inside job is it a nefarious single actor who is hacking these cryptocurrency exchanges is it a nationwide government that is hacking these exchanges who is the culprit but you don't know we just get these small articles saying that another exchange has been hacked and everyone just goes on about their business which is another important thing that I want to tell you that you guys need to understand, protect yourself and only yourself. Because the more stories that we see about this, the more you'll begin to see that, hey, hold up. These people really don't care about me. They don't care about my assets that I place on their exchange or anything. So I need to put myself first. Quote. At approximately 1.26 p.m. on Friday, May 31st, 2024, we detected an unauthorized leak of Bitcoin from our wallet, end quote, said DMM Bitcoin, a subsidiary of DMM Group, 
according to an English translation of the statement made in Japanese and posted to the company's website. The company said, or the exchange said, 4,502.9 Bitcoin, about $306 million worth, had been taken. It appeared to promise its client that it would reimburse customers if necessary. That should not even be a statement. They shouldn't have even came out with those words. If necessary, is obviously will be necessary because how will you get those Bitcoins back? Please, rest assured that all of your Bitcoin deposit will be fully guaranteed as we will procure the equivalent amount of Bitcoin that was leaked with support from our group companies, it said in its statement. Uh, duh. If you try to keep your reputation pristine and clean, I, I suggest that you guys try to get back those Bitcoin as soon as possible. And if not, go to the current exchanges, go to the current price of what Bitcoin currently is and start buying those Bitcoins back. If you're trying to save face. Now, I'm just showing you this article because this isn't the first hack breach of Bitcoin. According to crypto forensics firm Elliptic, it confirmed this exploit would rank as the quote, eighth largest crypto theft of all time. And the largest since the 477 million hacks suffered by FTX in November 2022. So Bitcoin is being hacked all over the place. So don't let people fool you in the statements that they make and say that Bitcoin is made out of thin air. It has no value like Peter Schiff and at one point Donald Trump. These people obviously don't understand. Bitcoin has value. You don't steal. You don't hack. You don't try to exploit something that doesn't have value. Because what's the point? You're going to go through these great lengths, break laws, try to create crime for something that has no value. Now make that make sense. Look at what people are doing rather than what people are trying to say and try to see if it merges together. See if it gels correctly because if it don't, then the action that people are actually doing is correct and what people are actually saying is wrong. Now, how can we protect ourselves from hacks, from getting our Bitcoin stolen? Well, for one, you want to use a hardware wallet, not a hot wallet. A hot wallet is one that is connected to the network, connected to the Internet. A hardware wallet is where you want to store your cryptocurrency. You know, these are those physical de devices. You have a um, nano you have tether that you're able to store your private keys offline making them less vulnerable to hacks and attacks what else well you can enable two-factor authentication use 2fa on your cryptocurrency exchange accounts and wallets this adds an extra layer of security by requiring a second form of verification in addition to your one password Use strong, unique passwords, create strong, unique password for your accounts and change them ever so often. Avoid using the same password across multiple platforms. If you guys can see what I just said, that could be a lane for someone to come through and create a device, a system on how you can have very strong, unique passwords across multiple platforms to where your mentality, your mind won't have to memorize them. But then again, that device or that system will also have to be ironclad. Now keep the software updated. Ensure that the wallet software, antivirus programs, operating system are up to date to protect against vulnerabilities that may pop up and people find, find bugs all the time in programs. Be cautious of emails, messages, or website that ask for your private keys or passwords. Don't give them your private keys. Don't give these people your passwords. Always double check the website address URLs and never click on suspicious links. OK. Uh, next, you want to secure your private keys. Never share your private keys with anyone. Store them securely, preferably offline and use encrypted backups. It's real simple. It's real simple. Don't give people access to this information. Use reputable exchanges. Trade on well-known and reputable cryptocurrency exchanges. How many of you have heard of this Japanese firm, DNM Bitcoin? It may be prominent in Japan. I'm not sure. 
but it's not like Binance. Binance is a global name that many people across the world knows and recognizes. Have anyone ever heard of DM Bitcoin? Also, check your accounts regularly for any unauthorized transactions or suspicious activity. And you might want to also enable uh, email or SMS alerts for any login attempts or transactions on the account that you hold. Simple. Do those steps and at least you will quell the possibility of you losing your cryptocurrency and or Bitcoin. This is Wild Wild West. Like I told you at the beginning of the video, don't expect people to come and be your savior. You have to be your own savior, protect your own assets. And always look at people's side eye. Now, I'm done. Let's do a quick look at Bitcoin real quick. Here it is. I did a video yesterday, I think, on Bitcoin. I told you I wasn't going to change my price prediction, but I wanted to show you the monthly time frame in Bitcoin. And this is a very big month for Bitcoin. You guys can see right here for the month of May that prior the month, the month prior right there in April, you guys can see how Bitcoin did signify some weakness for the month of April, but then it came right back up. So again, this area is being created as a place of demand. What I mean by demand, well, people are coming in buying the cryptocurrency whenever there's a dip in Bitcoin's price. Because if they wasn't buying it, then this month of May, the price of Bitcoin would have gone a lot lower than what it actually did because of the selling that occurred the month prior in April. So we pay attention to what the money is doing. And if people are buying Bitcoin down here, then it tells us that they're looking for higher prices in the longer term. So we're not going to change our idea yet in Bitcoin of seeing the market move go higher until something changes, i.e. we continue to see price and Bitcoin get rejected right here off our, our sell zone, then we'll need to have another conversation. But as of yet, that hasn't happened. Okay, they're still trying. I'm talking about the buyers. The buyers in Bitcoin are still trying to break that sell zone to the upside. Okay, that's what they're still trying to do. Okay, so let me go ahead and leave that here. Go ahead and give me your thoughts about the hack of that Japanese cryptocurrency exchange losing $300 million in Bitcoin. You would think that people would be a little bit more careful on how they move those bitcoins where at least they store it but apparently people haven't learned their lesson yet so give me your thoughts make sure you maintain the probability and as always trade different